Now may I invite um, Dr. C.W. Cho from City University um, to join me uh, at the platform. Thank you, Simon. Uh, I'm an engineer by training, so I go down to the very technicalities. So uh, for the benefits of uh, our overseas friends, maybe allow me to uh, present very briefly uh, overview of the generation sectors on top. On the upper half is in blue color, uh, shows the uh, power plant mix type of power plants that is uh, you know, that operate by CLP powers, uh, including in Hong Kong as well as on the uh, inside uh, China. The total capacity is about 8,080 megawatts, and uh, that cover also a small renewable that is in the town island, about 0.2 megawatts. So uh, produce about something like 32 gigawatt hours of electricity. That means represents 75% of uses in Hong Kong. The lower one is a bit, uh, you know, orange color. That is belong to HKE, and HKE the facilities are on Nam Island. But uh, as mentioned by TC, that is uh, a very lonely uh, wind on Nam Island plus the uh, photovoltaics on Nam Island's roof. The Hong Kong is uh, produce about three thousand. 3.8 gigawatts, uh, so, uh, sorry, but about 3,730 uh, megawatts, about uh, production is about 25 percent of Hong Kong. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, total capacity is about 12,000 megawatts. The maximum demand is very important that it takes when we need to have new installation or not. Reserve much up to today is about 33 percent. The sales is about 43 gigawatt hours. But renewable wind and PV capacity is less than 2 megawatts, 0.016% of total installed capacity. Production about 2 million by power plants, power companies, represent 0.005%, very, very little renewables. Okay. All right. So that has been, uh, I'm sure that's been, uh, you already very familiar that. The top one on the left hand side is the red color, is about the wind. Increasing quite uh, quite significantly by sixteen percent. The lower one is the blue color one is about photovoltaic increase very impressive impressive twenty six six percent. Now the one the reason is that uh, you look at on the right hand side there, you could see this uh, wind and solar PV are the fastest growing RE for this generations. One of the reasons you could see it because of the what we call the life cycle carbon emissions. All right, the wind and the solar PV are, more, both the, are the most impressive one. But the lower one, you will see on the right-hand side is the cost. The levelized cost it, uh, could be you know, the highest among the rest of it. So I'm giving you some information about the downside or the advantage or benefits of the renewable energies. But how about Hong Kong come to Hong Kong now? This you mentioned about that Hong Kong is so densely populated 75% Hong Kong area, land areas, countryside, 40% designated as country park. So we only have about 20 something percent left for developments. Uh, this one is uh, also you see that right hand side. There are also a couple of slides thing that you uh, present for some reasons. We didn't work together, right? So anyway, you will see that Hong Kong, Hong Kong is actually is uh, quite close to the equator. The closer the equator is the less wind resources, all right? That's very important. It's geographical constraints in Hong Kong. So the two power companies actually already obtained a environmental permit to build the offshore wind farm. The right-hand side one is near the uh, Clearwater Bay, that's 200 megawatts. The one south of Lama is 100 megawatts. So all together, 300 megawatts. Takes up 22 square meter of sea areas and cost about 10 billion at least. And based on information from the open uh, domain, public domain, roughly can produce about 600 million kilowatt hours, represent 1.4 percent. The capacity is 23 percent. That means you can get only 23 percent of what you design for, because sometimes you have wind, sometimes you don't have wind. So how about so rated? So again, this uh, that might also present by present. So Hong Kong was too bad, you know, in terms of uh, radiations. But based on public domain information, the HKE one, one megawatt of PV, last year produced about one million 
kilowatt hour load pressure sales. And nearly about 9,000 TV panel. Each panel is about 1.6 meters square. So we work it out somewhere, we need 17,000 square meters of land, open land. No, no, there's no any shattering, but you can only generate 1.1 million kilowatt hours. Capacity effect even worse, 13 percent. So I'm telling you what is actually you can get now. Okay. So what is the current arrangements? You can see on top of the pandemic, we charge 11 percent for net RV fixed assets. So if you can, the power company can produce more than one percent. You should see from renewable energy, they will get. 0.01% on top of 11%. That's in some case. How about for customers? Yes, the arrangements that's mentioned by TCF, <coughs> the company shall offer standard arrangement for better power supply for customers and better renewable energy. No, no. At this, uh, these are those who supply a portion of the electricity demand with renewable energy system at own premises. But how about the what we call spill power, the extra surface power? Well, there's another question. Shall be considered a case by case on reasonable terms. It's not mandatory. It is not mandatory. So, speakers talk about fee in tariffs. So that fee in tariffs offers a guarantee of payments. Now, I'm not going into detail of it. What I'd like to share with you is about UK FIT models. They guarantee minimum payment for all usage generated by the system. The two portions of it, Generation tar tariff, you get money. And any surplus export tariffs, you get money. So for example, solar PV, you receive something like 18.24 pence per kilowatt hours. A month is 18.24, 13, about 13.39 for new installation and 4.5 for export. And we never get more. And actually what you pay domestic, you see charges now in the UK is a 40.7. So we get money back. So, wind, solar, they are intermittent. They are not firm capacities. But what I can see in Hong Kong is they're sizable. They're sizable, it means compared with the power plants or small. Like, for example, the WI, the IWMF, they call waste energy, uh, waste energy facilities, can produce 480 million kilowatt hours, this is per year. And Christy mentioned about this OWTF, organic vegetable disease, can do it in a 40 minute. And the new sludge treatment disease produced in 18. If we have two incineration facilities, but two OWTF and one SPF, we can produce nearly one gigawatt. It's just this. Gigawatt hour is just this. Represent 2.2%. Then we need to talk about 2 to 3%. So, Another one would uh, like to uh, echo with uh, consumer council suggestion that we should have the future market facilitate super generations because that will increase business from 50 to 75 percent. We can make use of the lazy to produce hot water and use the absorption material to provide cooling. Okay, that's suggestion for discussions. Mandatory FIT scheme for household and developers who generate their own necessity using green technologies. Net metering scheme in case those are not familiar, allow general public to produce renewable electricity on site, to spin the meter networks. Spin the networks, okay? But the emission caps on CO2, we don't have it. Why don't we have it now? For the, for the future, uh, you know, markets? Our irrigation code of renewable proposed standard, trade of certificate, locally between power companies or cross boundary, about test credit for our installation, but better arrangement for all distributed generations. And the cost, expect will go up. But allocation of cost will depend on what sort of market we have. Do we still have this uh, unassociated vertical in the market? Or are we go to induction production? Thank you for attention. Well, thank you, CW. Um, I am particularly interested in, in your last slide. Perhaps we can revisit some of the points that you've put, put down there uh, in the panel discussion. Um, but before that, I would like to invite um, Joseph, Joseph Long from CNLP Power um, to share his, his thoughts. Joseph. Thank you, sir. Good 
afternoon, everyone. Uh, I don't have any slides with me today, so you're forced to listen to what I have to say. <laughs> um, let me say a few words about the public consultation on the future development of the electricity industry in Hong Kong first, and then I'll move on to uh, the subject of renewable energy, which is the focus of this forum. Now, one, one key question for policymakers and the community is to is to look at how we should objectively assess how well an electricity industry is doing. Now, what, what are the subjects in the report tax, so to speak, right? Now, consistent with global yardsticks, the Hong Kong government has set four objectives, safety, reliability, environmental performance, and reasonable tariffs. Now, Hong Kong, how, how does Hong Kong stack up? Um, let me share with you um, CLP's performance. In terms of safety and reliability, there are very few major accidents in Hong Kong. In terms of reliability, reliability we have one of the most reliable uh, electricity supply in the world. We're seven to 13 times better compared to the Sydney Central Business District, London, or New York. In terms of tariffs, we are below most of the major metropolitan cities around the world. Um, we have 42%, our tariffs are 42% lower than London, 56% lower than New York, 62% lower than Frankfurt in Germany. I think, I believe Frankfurt is about $3 per kilowatt hour in terms of retail tariffs. Um, CLP is about $1.10. In terms of environmental performance, for the past 25 years, Despite Hong Kong's electricity demand has grown or increased by 80%, our air emissions have actually decreased by 80%. And we've done this by bringing in um, cleaner fuel sources, as well as um, putting in the latest best available emissions reduction technology. In 2015, <coughs> this year, we expect uh, CLP Hong Kong's carbon intensity to go uh, to reduce down to a level of about um, 0.5 kilograms per kilowatt hour, which is comparable to the US and the UK levels. So when we're discussing possible changes or improvements to Hong Kong's electricity industry, uh, these are the achievements and standards we should benchmark ourselves against and see how we can improve upon those. Now, since this forum is focused on renewable energy, um, let me share some thoughts with you, and I'll start with CLP's position first. CLP supports the development of renewable energy in Hong Kong whenever it's practical to do so at a level that is commensurate with the community desire and willingness to pay. We can look at it in terms of uh, two, two perspectives. In terms of distributed renewable generation, CLP has already connected over 200 renewable energy systems onto our grid. We provide free technical assessments for schools and NGOs. We provide a free solar resource assessment for our interested customers who are interested to put solar panels on their roofs. Now, if a primary school can do it, you can do it if you want to. In terms of larger scale uh, renewable energy generation, we've developed Hong Kong's um, one of the largest standalone renewable energy system, which is in Town Island, mentioned by one of the previous speakers. CLP is also taking forward the um, feasibility study for a 200 megawatt offshore wind farm, uh, which is about 10 kilometers outside of Clearwater Bay. Um, CLP Group itself, we are one of the largest renewable energy investors in China and India. We are the largest, single largest foreign wind in investor in India. Um, we have publicly pledged that as a group, by 2020, we will have 30% of our generating capacity to come from non-carbon emitting sources. Now, i just like to highlight one key difference between renewable energy development um, between Hong Kong and overseas, and that is land availability. 
Um, in general, as you've heard the other speakers said, renewable energy requires a significant amount of land to generate the same amount of output compared to conventional fuel, which is a, a special challenge for Hong Kong. Um, to give you a sense of perspective, to generate 1% of Hong Kong's annual electricity requires covering a land area of about 18 Victoria Parks. For our overseas speakers, um, Victoria Park is a, a landmark uh, park in Hong Kong, um, which is about um, 0 0.2 square kilometers. Um, we need 18 of Victoria Parks to make 1% of Hong Kong's um, uh, energy. Now, although larger scale land-based projects are, are challenging, I believe there are more there is potential for more small-scale distributed renewable energy in Hong Kong, such as uh, roof, uh, rooftop solar on top of schools um, and, and other buildings. Which brings us to the second challenge um, that the other speakers have mentioned, which is a generation cost. Now, the generation cost of renewable energy is usually higher than that of conventional generation even when we ignore the intermittency or dispatchability characteristics. Therefore, um, a higher level of renewable energy entails um, a higher tariff level. And that's something that I know that the government has asked in this consultation on how much more the community is willing to pay in terms of uh, renewable energy. Now, once we have arrive at the extent of how much more we're willing to pay, then we can look at appropriate um, renewable energy development schemes that can be, can be taken forward. Now this may include um, cross-subsidy programs such as feed and tariffs um, or um, net metering that other speakers have mentioned. Now we need to look at these programs uh, very carefully because from overseas experience they have, they've worked very well in terms of promoting renewable energy development, no doubt, okay? But they're not without controversy. And one of the controversies is that they um, uh, subject to the accusation that the poor is subsidizing the rich because the rich are the people who can afford the capital investments in the solar system and they are the people who can afford the big roofs, okay? But the fin and tariffs are paid by everyone and a lot of the grassroots who do not have access to a roof, they have to pay more um, to subsidize these. So they're not without controversy. And I'd suggest in Hong Kong, we look at this carefully and we adhere to two key principles. One is transparency. Uh, renewable energy involves higher generation costs and the cost of the programs should be transparent. Okay, and be commensurate with a level that the community is willing to pay. Secondly, it's appropriateness. We should have developed the schemes to be pragmatic, cost-effective, and suitable for the Hong Kong environment. And we are open to explore suggestions that would um, bring long-term benefits for Hong Kong. Now, let me conclude by saying that CLP has been serving Hong Kong for generations. And our values are aligned with Hong Kong. We wouldn't be here if we didn't do that. And we welcome opportunities to discuss this very important matter uh, with all of you. Thank you very much.